All right, for this training video, I'm going to try to very, very quickly explain how to get a Google site set up so that you have a place that you can post blog items, information, maybe set it up for your classroom, allow students to access it, pull off files, do different things with it. And we're going to do a very, very basic site this time. So this is going to be just the most simple way to just get something that's functional up and running and we'll cover the advanced stuff in a later um, series of videos. Um, first thing you need to do is be logged into your Google account. So you can log into your Gmail account or your calendar and then what you're going to need to do is click on sites. Now when you click on sites you will have a screen that looks very much like this one. This screen allows you to create a site. You'll have a button somewhere on there that creates a site and you may not have these listed here. This is some other sites that I've created or have been created on my behalf or are part of the domain legacyk8.org. You might have a different situation and so yours could be completely blank and that's okay. But the important thing is we need to find a, a button that says create new site and we're going to go ahead and click that button. And when we do, we get this nice little uh, form that's going to be very easy for us to fill out. And there's a couple things to notice. First of all, we're going to start with a template. Blank template. That means there's no information pre-populated. It's just a blank site, just a blank slate. You can do anything you want with it. Very, very simple. That's what we're going to work on today. Um, there is also a gallery of pre-created sites that have some information sort of already populated that you would just highlight and delete and then add your own information in there. That is a good way of going if you want to start with kind of a fancier look or something that's just uh, um, a little bit more built um, where you don't have to do as much of the work on your own. We're going to just do a blank template because I think you're going to find this is quite easy actually anyway. Alright, so we're going to name the site. So I'm going to call it the test example site and when I do right below that is you're gonna get the site location URL and that is the location where people can actually visit to see your site and it's a fairly complex uh, website address it's gonna be sites.google.com and then it's gonna involve your domain and at the very end you'll notice that it named it what your name of your site is um, it is possible that you could have two sites with the same name on your domain and if that happens, right here it's going to give you an error message and it's going to say, hey, please change the name of your site slightly so that the two of them aren't confused. And so if somebody else has a test example site, I would have to call it test example site 2, for instance, and that would fix it. But we're just going to know that this test site is probably set up just correctly and you'll be fine. And, you know, if you have to play with the name, you'll, you'll kind of be aware of what the problem could be. Next step is to go ahead and select a theme. So we're going to just select a theme from one of these options and there's quite a few different options and you're just going to pick one and once you do it will be highlighted in red. There's nothing to do more. You don't have to double click it or anything. Just highlight it in red. And then scroll down to the very, very bottom because there's also one more button called More Options. And when we click More Options, we get some other additional information that it wants. It wants to know if this belongs to a category of sites. In, and in our case, our example site, it does not belong to a category of sites, but it's quite possible maybe you're making a series of sites and that you want one site to be the main site and then to have subcategories underneath that. That would be where you would set this up. It's a little more advanced. We're not going to cover it right now. Then you want a site description. So I'm just going to say this is a test for Google Sites. Test site for Google Sites. And then last but definitely not least, the share with. This is important because this controls who gets to see your website and that's one of the nice things about Google Sites is we can actually say certain people have access and other people don't. We can say the whole world has access. We get to control that though. Right now it's set to everybody at Legacy Academy has access and what that means is everybody with the domain LegacyK8.org would have access to see this website. Um, people that don't have a LegacyK8.org login would not be able to see the website. All right, so the next option is only people that you specify. This is even more specific. So let's say you had a small group that need, of five people that you wanted access to a particular website. You could give those email addresses to those um, and, and identify them in there and they would be the only ones that could actually access this website. So only people that I specify can view this site allows only specific people with user email addresses that you set up to have access to the site so you can really control it and lock it down. The last option is let anyone in the world make it public. 
This just means that it's available on the Google web search. Everybody can see it. Um, you would use that option if it was a, a public web page, um, something that you, you wanted everybody to go to, and that would certainly be that option. I'll let everyone in the world make it public. I'm going to just go ahead and leave it only people I specify because this is going to be kind of a private site. All right, so I'm all ready to go, and I'm going to go ahead and hit Create. Now, while I do that, it's going to take a couple minutes for it to actually get the site created, and when it's finished, it's just going to pull right up on the screen. And I want to kind of go over what's going on here. Now, at the top, we have our bar. This is just where you um, are logged into your Google account, and this is going to be where you can access documents, calendar, mail, all of those things. Right below it now, we have this new bar that's been created, a new toolbar. And it shows that we're under the home page, that it was just updated in a minute ago. And then it's going to give me an edit page button, a new page button, and a more button, which is where we're going to get into some very advanced stuff in our web page. And then it also gives us a share button. So right now it says it's private only to me. So right now this website is only mine. If I click on the share button, I can add people so that it can be other people's websites as well and I can even give them access to edit the website if I chose so you could have a group of five or six people collaborating on one website which is nice. Now I've got my um, website's um, name the test example site that was what we called it over here I have the sidebar which is going to have my menu for where I access the website and in the main part of my web page it's just a static flyer based web page and I can edit and change and add information. Let's just go ahead and start there. Let's go ahead and click Edit Page. And then what I want to do is type in some information. So I'm going to type in some information into that box. Now you notice that it went into edit mode and it gave us two new toolbars. It gave us the Insert Format Table Layout buttons and then it gave us kind of some toolbars that you would see in Microsoft Office or Apple Pages. These are going to be handy because I can insert all kinds of different information into this web page. I can do images, links, videos, presentations, um, photos, really just about anything that I want I can embed into this web page and I can give other people access to it. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and just I'm be happy that I typed in some information in and I'm going to hit save and you'll see now that my website has some information in there and it's already built and and that's the most basic website you could do. Now you could, if you just wanted to post a few things here, you could stop. This is it because you can just add some information in there and you'd be set. We're going to talk about real quick how to create some more pages because right now this is a single page website. There's no other pages to link to. We're going to go ahead and click on the new page button and this is going to be fun. We're going to get some new things that we can actually add to our website, some new pages. Uh, the one, one page that I like the most is blogs. I'd like to have a blog where I can update information maybe to my students that um, is essentially, you know, you have information that you post one day and then you post new information it pushes that down and then you post more information and it just keeps updating and it's almost like a ladder. It just keeps pushing it down. None of the information goes away. It just gets older and older. And so as it gets older, it just moves down the page. It's very handy because it keeps your page very updated. It's super simple to, um, for you to go in and type and get information in there and it's a great way to keep in touch with, uh, with whoever's subscribing to your blog. So um, I go ahead and gave it a name, blog, and this is where I select the web template to use, and it has a standard web page, announcements, filing cabinet, list, and start page. Well, let me discuss those. Web page is a static-based web page, so it's just basically a flyer, digital flyer. Announcements is a blog-style page, where I can make new posts and it's going to push your little post down and it's going to just keep adding new posts. That's the one we're going to do. File cabinet is actually where you can insert files so you can actually create a web page where you can upload files to the page and then they're available for download later. You can even give access to other people to upload files to that page and then you can download it later. So it's a real good way to maybe manage files that you might be sending back and forth. Then there's a list. List operates very much like a spreadsheet and it's going to create a list and it's going to allow you to categorize things um, very neat and organized. Then we have a start page. You're really not going to use this very much anymore. I'm not going to talk too much about it. It's essentially what the home page is. It's the very first page that people would land on when they type in the URL of this web page. For us, we're just going to leave that one alone because you'll probably never need to change the start page. I'm going to go ahead and click on announcements. Now, right under announcements, we've got select a location. Do we want to put it at the top level, right as the home, or do we want to put it under 
the home page. So if I wanted to categorize, maybe I had several different blogs. I could have one page as my main blog, and then underneath it, I could have several others, and it just basically creates subcategories, and it does it in kind of an outline style. I'm just going to go ahead and leave mine at the top, and then I'm going to go ahead and hit create. Now, once I do, this is the fun part, you'll see that I have home and blogs now. And I'm on the blog web page, so it's showing me exactly where I'm at. Now, if I click on home, I go back to the home page, click on blogs again. Now I'm on my blog page. Beautiful part about a blog. This is what is going to really make life easy for you. In order to update or change the blog, all you have to do is click new post. And then you're just going to type in some information. So I'm going to type in post number one. This is my very first post and I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Now once I've done that, I've actually created my blog and you'll see that blog now has post number one underneath it over to the right. And that just shows me when I click on blogs I can get a list of all my blogs or if I click on the blog page you will see that I have post number one listed and then above it there's a place for me to actually hit new post and I can add another post. So I'm going to go ahead and add another one and I'm going to call it post number two just so you can see how this works. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit save. So I've got post number one, post number two, and then if I click on blogs, you're going to see both, post number two and post number one. Notice that it pushed number one down when I added post number two. That's kind of the way it works. So it's a very neat way to kind of stay organized because you could post something every day and it would move all the old information out of your way and put that day's activities right at the very, very top of the web page. And it does it without you having to delete or change any of the other information, which I find is extremely handy. All right, well, let's go ahead on our adventure here and we're going to create one more type of web page. We're going to go ahead and add a new page. And we are going to select the file cabinet style page. And I'm going to go ahead and hit files. And I'm, going to, again, going to leave it at the top level. I'm going to hit create. And when I do so, you'll see I have home, blogs, and files now. And since I just created the page, it takes me right to my file page. And here's where I can add a file or I can move them around. I can do all kinds of different things. I'm just going to go ahead and hit add file. And it allows me to pick a web page file. So maybe a file from another website, or I can pick it right from my computer, and I'm going to do that. I have some audio that I recorded from an earlier tutorial, and I'm going to go ahead and choose it, and I'm going to say Upload. And when I do, it has uploaded that, that file right to my web page, and it has given me a download link. So now anybody that goes to this web page can actually download that file right from there. And it's going to be a great opportunity for me to just build kind of an archive of different information that I want somebody else to have in a, in a really handy place. All right, last thing we're going to talk about real quick is this home page. Um, we're going to go ahead and edit the home page again. And you do that by going to Edit Page right there. And when you do, you get to insert all kinds of different content into this web page. One of the things you can insert is um, you can insert recent posts and this is very handy. When I click on insert recent posts it's gonna say where do I want to show the snippets from? Now a post is from my blog style, my announcement page. And this is gonna allow me to update my home page with the stuff in my blog but I only ever have to input new information into my blog. So whenever I change the information in the blog my home page is going to show that change and it's gonna make it real, real easy for me to make my web page always look like it's current and up to date. So I'm going to go ahead and say show posts from blogs. I just want a short snippet. Five posts, so it's going to show my most five recent posts. And then I'm going to just pick it, and we'll call it recent announcements. We're just going to leave it pretty much like it is, but if I wanted to change the title, I could right there. I'm going to hit save. Now when I do that, I get this fancy little box, and it's uh, basically saying in this box is going to be some content that content is actually going to come from somewhere else. So when I hit save, watch what happens. It's got my post number one and my post number two listed right there um, on my home page. So now if I go to my blog page and I hit new post, so let's say I'm updating some information. I want to let my students in on something. I'm going to say post number three. This is post number three. And I'm going to hit save. Not only is it going to create that post for me, but when I go to the home page, 
post number three is actually right at the top of the home page and so my students when they go to the home page will be able to see that and then they'd be like oh that's what I need to look at they can click on it and it'll take them right to that post all right we're gonna cover a lot more advanced things in subsequent tutorial videos this should be enough to just get you started and playing around with it I'm gonna cover some of the more advanced features as we kinda of move along thank you much